Oh look, we have a brief moment of almost sunshine today. <laughs> Overnight, we received a message from a client stating that their AC was working perfectly fine and then suddenly was not. Uh, we did have a whole lot of lightning storms, thunderstorms roll through the area last evening. So uh, hopefully it's unrelated. Uh, if it is related, we may get lucky and it may be something as simple as a capacitor. On the other hand, you know, our, our motor on the outside, our compressor, is our biggest mechanical load on the home. So a lot of times lightning damage will surge through that to ground itself, essentially. So hopefully not. It may be completely unrelated to the storms, but we'll find out shortly. It does appear to be operating. We have a helper today. You can hear him in the background. It's not displacing much heat. And I do notice we also do not have any service caps here. So we are cooling. Let's uh, check the refrigerant really quickly just to see. We're running a 109 on the suction. I believe this guy is 410A here. Uh, it's not looking too out of line, Rob. Uh, essentially, it is a 36 degree wall. We're running about a 10 degree superheat. Inside the hole at this point is uh, about 68 degrees out here at the moment with all our thunderstorms. We're about 68 out here as well. So, um, I wouldn't find that really out of line. Let's check the electrical department see if we may have an issue going on with the capacitor. Don't worry, you'll chase me off as soon as I'm done. Alright, we'll check our capacitance here on our compressor side. It's on the 41. And we'll check on the fan side here. I can get my probe in there. So our capacitor is supposed to be a 45.5 um, with a, it give us a 5% variance on that. With that 5% variance, we would just multiply 45 by 0 0.05 and comes out to, I believe, 2.5. So if we saw anything below 42.75, uh, that would mean we do have a bad capacitor by a little bit. So technically that could cause him to overheat a little bit and eventually shut down or perhaps not start. Um, that is kind of right there on the line. Uh, we'll go ahead and replace it because technically it is bad, but I'm not convinced that's the issue over here just as yet. Now we may want to check, we did check our superheat, but we're not really aware whether this is a expansion valve or a piston as of yet. So we'll have to crawl under the house, double check that just at its age. I would imagine it's probably an expansion valve, but you never can tell. They may have installed a larger air handler with a piston to um, hit the energy criteria they were looking for on it. So we'll take a peek under the house as well and uh, replace that capacitor. Goodman Manufacturing, at one time, they used to mount their piston cages externally on the air handlers here, and it would also be the spot where your screw-in expansion valve would go. However, what they found was in the advent of 410A and energy efficiency requirements, they would provide it this way, give a TXV to you that you were supposed to field install. However, I, I think what happened is they found most people would just put the piston in it, close it back up, and not even worry about the TXV, so they weren't really hitting the energy efficiency requirements they were looking for. Um, so they started putting them internally and pre-installing the expansion valves. Uh, so there's a very good likelihood we're going to open this door and we'll have one right there. So let's see what we got. And yes, uh, we do have an expansion valve inside. See our expansion valve there, all the way up there. Uh, so we are definitely an expansion valve coil. We will 
let them know it's about time to replace this filter. It's not terrible. And the other thing we notice is this is a Flanders while our rack itself is a Honeywell. So what we have, when we put this back in here, give you an example. As you'll notice our Honeywell filter is a little bit bigger and it's allowing, it's also a little bit taller, uh, thicker and taller rather, so it's allowing this filter to not really block off our airflow. Um, so we are getting air around it and if you're not filtering the air because it's not in the airstream then you know it's not really doing its job so do be aware that uh, a lot of these media filters you do have to use their specific filter or a uh, manufacturer's off-brand filter that is made to fit that housing but uh, we do know that it is an expansion valve down here so in that particular case we will recheck this uh, looking for subcooling as we are a little cooler this morning what our expansion valve is doing is it's trying to maintain a superheat so our superheat looks correct however as i say we are a little cooler this morning because of all of our rain so as the day heats up we may not have a solid column of liquid going through here as this valve reacts to our temperature changes it's opening up as it opens up it may hit the point that it's open so much that we no longer have any liquid so get no subcooling and then our superheat disappears and that can happen in the heat of the day so let's double check our charge again uh, while knowing we are operating with a uh, expansion valve well it looks like i didn't notice the camera wasn't recording so we'll do a dramatic recreation we will just replace this faulty capacitor with a new one and with that totally accurate and not ai generated at all dual capacitor change out all that's left is to check the charge well, all looks good here let's move on to the next one kind of lovingly refer to those as nuisance calls this particular case refrigerant charge looked good on superheat side we did figure out that it was an expansion valve did check it on subcooling and everything lined up pretty much with exactly what the manufacturer wanted uh, moved along checked the capacitor it was a little bit low but honestly you know we're talking a five percent variance is allowed so that 45 cap down to a 42.75 I mean, we were we were reading 41 point something so technically it was bad we went ahead and changed it honestly i don't believe that would have been causing the issues they were talking about more than likely what probably happened and after speaking with the uh, customer a little bit their issue was occurring when we were having a couple of thunderstorms roll through yesterday and their power they said was flickering on and off browning out a little bit turning off completely a couple of times so what i believe probably happened is temperature was rising in there just due to you know it was 90 degrees and thunderstorming outside <laughs> uh, lots of humidity temperature probably rose a little bit while the power was flickering in and out those units they do on the outside on the heat pumps have a typically five minute delay a short cycle delay the idea is they don't want that compressor turning on too rapidly or cycling too close together because you could run into some issues where you might have some liquid in the system you might end up with a, a lot of high pressure coming back against that compressor and it may even technically start backwards sometime which is not very good for a scroll compressor um, so they give it five minute delay to let the pressures kind of equalize in the system make sure there's no liquid uh, pumping into the compressor directly and your board will do that on the outside but also most digital thermostats have that built in as well so what i'm thinking with their power flickering on and off they may have been stuck in a short cycle delay loop from the thermostat to the outdoor unit power go back off power flicker make them go back into short cycle delay because they'll they'll do it if the outdoor units call for cooling stops and then restarts quickly or heating in a heat pump situation However, they'll also do it as soon as power is applied. And so if power is ever cut or drops down enough, it will initiate that short cycle delay next time there's a call for cooling or heating. So I believe that's what they probably found is we couldn't find anything else really going on. They do need to do something about the filter. I mentioned that to them and uh, they wanted to order one off Amazon. So, you know, I give it a 50-50 that gets changed. But uh, we'll move along to the next one and see what we can find. Maybe it'll be something fun to play with.